Hello pumpkins! It is time for part three of why Doreen Virtue is a piece of crap. Caveats before I get started. If you're a Christian, you're welcome here. This is a place where we have constructive dialogue and you are welcome to say things in the comments like, in my church we believe this, or that's interesting, I grew up believing this. Totally fine! What it is not okay to do is to come into my comments and tell me that you see demons in my eyes and start talking like your religion is more valid than my religion just because it's more popular. So the rule on this channel is don't be a dick. Your religion is not an MLM, please do not try to recruit me. Now some people have said that, well, Doreen Virtue is allowed to change her mind, she's allowed to convert, and that is totally okay. I had my own conversion experience, twice. <laughs> going into and out of Christianity, and I actually encourage that. I think that people should take a good hard look at what they believe and what works for them and what doesn't work for them, and their relationship with any deity that they may or may not believe in, and that's that's hard, and I, I really encourage people to be self-aware and to, to take that deep inner look. My problems with Doreen Virtue are not about the fact that she converted. My problems with Doreen Virtue are about the lying, the fraud, the judgment, the manipulation, the deceit. These are my problems, and this is why I could probably make a 10-part video about why Doreen Virtue is a piece of crap. But we're on part three, and I haven't even started with what happened when she converted. We're still back on when she was doing the New Age stuff. I, I understand that there are issues with her publishing and stuff like that. We're not even there yet. We will get to that. That's like part five or six. Right now, we are talking about when she was involved in the New Age movement and something that she has carried into her platform within Christianity is something that we call spiritual bypassing and toxic positivity. These may seem like big words, you will totally understand what I'm getting at. These are issues that Doreen Virtue, both in New Age and within Christianity, espouses, and they can be incredibly toxic and harmful. So what are they? Toxic positivity and spiritual bypassing are, are two things that are kind of intertwined. So toxic positivity, I will leave some links below if you want to look further into this, is when you ignore really serious stuff and coat that over with fake positivity when things aren't positive. Now, I think that it's important to have a positive attitude. I do think that there is positive aspects to thinking positive. It's Monday. I like Mondays. Monday is a fresh new start to the week. That's great. That means that I'm going to have a good day on Monday. I think that if you believe in yourself that you are more likely to accomplish things, I think that having goals and, and focusing on the positive is, is excellent. But there are also times when we need to acknowledge when something isn't good so that we can fix it. And I also think that we have a shadow self that we need to embrace. Now, ideas of shadow self come from Jung, and I do, re I do realize that there are problems with Carl Jung. A lot of people who quote Jung have never read Jung. I have read Jung. I certainly have issues with the fact that he says that if a woman is um, overridden with her animus, i.e. acting too masculine, that she needs to have it beaten out of her. I disagree with that entirely. Um, I have some other issues with Jung and um, think that he may have had some mental health stuff going on, but there are some things of Jung that I do accept, and one of those is, is the shadow self, and I don't think that we should banish or destroy our shadow self. I think it's a part of who we are, and that we can embrace it in a healthy way. We have, we all have qualities that are not so positive, and if we ignore our shadow self and we don't work on ourself, then these things come out in kind of negative ways. You're going to see Merlin off in the corner here. He's, uh, he's bearing a toy <laughs> in a blanket. For instance, if we were to talk about my shadow qualities, my negative qualities, I am stubborn. I am so, so stubborn. And that is often seen as a negative. We live in a world where things change very rapidly and we need to adapt and sometimes being stubborn for the sake of being stubborn is just being obstinate. But then there's this other side to that which is determination, which is what I see as integrity, which is sticking to your guns, which is not quitting. And sometimes you need to quit. And we have this 
idea in our society that we should never ever quit at anything. And I think that sometimes if something's really not working, that you need to let it go and understand that you need to let it go. Toxic positivity says never quit. I tend to practice a more stoic view. So it just is. How we react to that is what we control. And often we, it, within toxic positivity, we, we won't admit when there's a problem. We just want to like positive think it away. And though I do think there are positive, that it is a good thing to have a positive attitude, when you don't acknowledge what's going on, things get worse. And that's, that's a problem. For instance, if you have debt problems that are destroying your credit and you can't get a credit card or get an apartment because of your credit, then simply wishing away your credit and not picking up the phone is not going to help improve your credit through just like positive thinking. You can't positive think away your debt. But if you face your problems and say, okay, this is a problem, and you talk to the creditors and you work out a deal and I mean really if all you can pay if all you can really afford is $25 a month and you can stick to that then you do $25 a month and maybe talking with a financial planner or credit counseling or doing something to face that problem having a plan that's a very positive way to get through things to say I recognize this is an issue and this is how I'm going to accomplish that this is going how I'm going to fix that so that's that's more of a stoic view of saying this is an issue I understand that I have debt and I have to do something about it. And that's going to be uncomfortable, but I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to start my plan today. I'm motivated to start my plan today. That's good. Toxic positivity is essentially this face. Sometimes you need to put on a happy face for, for children, for others, but when things are really not good, you have to acknowledge that things are not good. This morning, getting out of the shower, on my left shoulder, I noticed a freckle that has changed shape and is darker. And my mother had melanoma. She actually has a scar on her face from when she had um, a, a spot removed. I think it was 13 when that happened. My cousin had melanoma on her back. And now I, someone who's always been freckly, someone who sunb sunburns very easily, hey, now has a spot on a place where I often get burned on my shoulder. So am I freaking out that I may have something that's deadly? No. Am I ignoring it? No. What I'm going to do is after, is say, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I am going to contact my doctor. As soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna say, hey, I got a spot. I just noticed it. Can, we, can you refer me to a dermatologist? And so that's, that's how I'm gonna do this. I'm not having a reaction. I'm not saying everything is light and love and I'm just going to positive think it all away because that's not gonna help anything. That's going to make things worse. What's, what's going to make things better is understanding that there's a problem and taking action. And Dorian Virtue has always had this philosophy that you don't acknowledge anything negative. That is damaging to people. Now, spiritual bypassing is kind of toxic positivity with a religious or spiritual undertone to it. So an example of spiritual bypassing might be like if, if a child dies tragically, I should have put a disclaimer at the beginning of this. Um, if a child dies tragically and you refuse to acknowledge grief and just say, I'm so glad that this happened because it's all part of God's plan. And you're not acknowledging that pain and you're not working through that grief that's not healthy and that has always been part of dorian virtue's philosophy is to really just ignore anything that is uncomfortable or negative and call it dark and just pretend that it doesn't exist to have this fear around anything that's not entirely light and love and cotton candy that is not healthy. I talked before on this channel about how a lot of Christianity is rooted in Zoroastrian tradition and some of that branches into ancient Egyptian spirituality in which, and I'm going to leave a, a video below that's going to talk more about this. Yes, I know that there are some inaccuracies, especially when they're talking about the goddess Isis um, and the birth of Horus. There's some inaccuracies there, but essentially that there's this dichotomy between light and dark and that everything light is good and that everything dark is evil. That is a very basic understanding. There's no nuance in that. And that has bled into a lot of what we see today as modern Christianity, which comes through Neoplatoism into um, 
Augustine and St. Aquinas, and you can research all that on your own. But essentially, you see this um, good, bad, up, down, heaven, hell, man, woman, uh, saved, damned, gay, straight, Republican, Democrat, and everything is into categories that you know, is either all or none. It, it's all binary. It's a zero-sum game of dichotomies. And within my faith, everything's in threes, not twos. So we see things in 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 green and gray and the um, the sacred things are the things that are in between. So dark doesn't necessarily have to be evil. During the month of December and January, it's pretty dark. And these are times when we can bond. These are times when we can be together. These are times that are that can be growth. That dark part, that's the beginning of the day. And if you think of like, when you plant a seed, it starts to grow in the dark. A baby grows in the dark of its mother's womb. So dark isn't necessarily evil. I mean, it can be. There are things that are nocturnal that are out in the woods that are scary and dangerous that we can't see. But dark can also be peace. Dark can be cozy. Dark can be sitting by the fireplace with a book. Dark can be sleep. Um, dark can be beautiful dreams. So I don't think that we necessarily have to put everything in these everything is good or everything is bad categories. And Dorian Virtue sim certainly has done that throughout her career. Starting with the New Age stuff, everything was all light and love and anything that wasn't a part of this saccharine sweet disgustingly like you know way too sweet baklava no offense if you like baklava like way 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 too sweet um spirituality and then anything that questioned that anything that said well i'm grieving because a child just died or i'm anxious because i have debt there were, people were just told to ignore that people were just told that they're being too negative and that they're attracting negative energy and sometimes stuff just happens and it's not our fault but it's our responsibility. And so grieving over the loss of a child or facing your debt, that's maybe not your fault. Maybe it is your, I mean, I'm hoping that death of a child wasn't your fault, but um, you know, maybe your debt was your fault. Maybe it wasn't. Amanda Montel in her book, Cultish, talks about thought stopping cliches. And these are things that we say that stop thoughts and stop thinking and stop going deeper. And it's stuff like, oh, it's all in God's plan, or the Lord works in mysterious ways, or just give it to God. And these things aren't always the best way to deal with things because it is our responsibility to fix our lives when we have messed up or when we have not messed up, when we've been through stuff. If you have experienced horrific stuff as a kid and you have PTSD, that's not your fault. But working on your mental health so that you are not taking it out on others that is your responsibility. And I think Doreen Virtue really missed the mark on that and continues to. A lot of people who are into her old angel work use the term light and love. Too much of anything is not good for you. We like sugar. We are programmed as a species to like things that taste sweet because usually things that taste sweet but now we have too much sweet and that's leading to um, issues with you know metabolic disorders and obesity and diabetes and stroke and heart disease and all this stuff because it's too much sugar and then there's the light part if you're into angels and you're talking about light hands up if you know who the bringer of light is the bringer of light is lucifer and so if you're all light 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 love 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 that's quite literally the domain of the devil. Too much on any one side. I mean, being too much in the darkness, I mean, that can be depression and that can be um, some really awful stuff that can be, you know, focusing too much on revenge and focusing too much on being angry. And, and yeah, that's, that's not good for you either. Um, but being too much in light and too much in love, that can be an unhealthy thing. And I think that those who have followed Doreen Virtue's teachings closely have been, have had a disservice done to them. I, um, I would like to see more healthy dialogue within that new age community and not have everything be so disgustingly saccharine sweet and have everything focused on the light because we do know who the bringer of light is. So that is part three of why Dorian Virtue is a piece of crap. <sighs> What's going to be part, part four? Am I going to go into her publishing stuff on part four? I think that'll be it. Because I know I have a lot of people in the comments who are like, but she took her name off of her books and she, you know, didn't want to be recognized for that. Yeah, but she's still getting paid. So we'll get into that in part four. 
Until then, may you pray with a good fire. Bye, pumpkins.